What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, we have some Detroit Lions news. The Lions went out and added some defensive line depth after losing Joel Heath for the season, who has been placed on IR after an injury in OTAs. So let's get it started. Stay up, we're going to bite a kneecap off, and we're going to stand up, and then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap, and we're going to get up, and then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you. Before... Before long, we're the, going to be the last one standing. And welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. And we got a little bit of Lions news to discuss. Now, before we get into the Lions news, I do want to give you guys this update one more time. I brought up my Penny Soul video yesterday, so you guys can skip ahead if you want to. But I will be leaving for the next couple of weeks on vacation. So I want to give you guys the update. We are going to do our best to put out all the Lions news. It may be a little late sometimes, but I'm going to do my best to stay on top of it. We will be recording from different locations. I, I, I can't really promise anything. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to do our best to keep updated on everything Lions for these next couple of weeks. So I appreciate your support. It's been awesome. I'm going to do my best to keep you guys updated with everything. I just wanted to give you guys that quick update if you're wondering. So some of the live streams that we do, it's probably be really tough to make that happen. So just, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, that's, that's what it is. So we have some Detroit Lions news that we have to talk about today. The Lions made a signing, and this is kind of weird that they would make this signing today when I'm leaving. But anyways, they signed defensive lineman Brian Price out of UTSA, the University of Texas, San Antonio. So the Lions made a signing today to add some of that defensive line depth back after putting Joel Heath on injury reserve. Now, remember, they brought in Todd Gurley for a visit. They brought him in for a physical. I don't know if he passed or not, but they did not sign Todd Gurley. But today, they signed a defensive lineman. Now, the Lions really have depth at every position because they have the roster full but this defensive lineman brings a lot of energy with him now he started as a juco player he was not recruited by schools coming out of high school he said so he went to junior college and then after being in junior college for a little bit utsa i guess they kind of reached out to him right they were like hey we, we want you to come here and he said he thinks it was the running back coach first they went to go meet him they flew over to go see him and obviously then he went to utsa now he said when he first got there he was like man i made the wrong decision it's 108 degrees in the scrimmage this is dumb well why would i come here but then he said, ultimately, you know, once you got past the weather, it was the right decision for him to make. Now, he didn't have crazy production at UTSA, which probably was a big reason that he went undrafted. Didn't have that big of production. He played in 65% of their snaps. From what I've read, he's more of a run defender there. I really haven't went through the college film, to be honest with you. I've read some stuff, but I haven't went through the college film. However, he went undrafted, and this is what he said about the draft process. I don't care if I'm a sixth-round pick, a seventh-round pick. I don't give a dang as long as I'm picked up somewhere. Basically, as long as I go somewhere, I don't really give a dang, you know, where I go. And then he's like, if people say you can't make it because you went to a small school, there's been plenty of other players that went to smaller schools that have done it at the National Football League. So since that point, he has bounced around the NFL. He really has not found a home in the NFL. He's only 26 years old right now because that was the 2016 draft that he went and drafted, but he's bounced around the league. He's been with Green Bay, Dallas, Cleveland, Oakland, and then Green Bay again was his latest stop. The Packers have apparently been interested in Brian Price. So maybe he can give us some intel because he's familiar with, you know, the Packers in this division a little bit, you know, maybe, get, but the Packers have been interested in this guy multiple times. First off, they signed him as a UDFA. Then in 2018, when he's with the Browns practice squad, they tried to take him from the practice squad, but the Browns are like, hold up, let us give you a little bit of a bonus as a practice squad player, make it like 30,000 more. And he's like, okay, I'm going to stay with Cleveland. And then he's the last team they're with. So it's, I mean, they keep trying to go get him. It's not working, but they keep trying to do it. But now he's with the Lions. So, you know, maybe he'll have to just kind of like, go off on the Packers. A little. Cleveland and Oakland is where he played the most. Now, he brings a lot of size. He's six foot three, 322 pounds. I think he's balked up a little bit since coming into the NFL, getting a little bit bigger because I've seen some reports coming into college that he was 305. So I think he's gotten a little bit bigger since he's gotten into the NFL, probably to, you know, adjust to the size difference at the National Football League. So I went back and watched the film. Now, I went and watched film from 2018 when he was with the Cleveland Browns. And they ran some 3-4, they ran some 4-3. Interestingly enough, with Cleveland back in 2018, Jamie Collins was there. So I wonder if this was something that Jamie Collins was like, hey, yeah, he's a cool dude. You know, I vouch for this guy. Go get him. You know, he's a really cool guy. So they played together in Cleveland. I just thought that was an interesting note. And that's where a lot of his snaps came in. So I went back and watched some of the film there. Now, he was very rotational on and off the field. Some drives there, some drives not. And he got promoted during the season when they decided to wave a different defense lineman. They promoted him from the practice squad because that's where he started. And of course, a year later, they would release him in August. A year later in 2018, they would end up 
up waving him. And some of my initial takeaways from watching some of the film, I haven't went completely deep into it, but I have watched a few games of Brian Price. And let me just say, with his size at six foot three, three twenty, that's a really good size for a three four defensive lineman. It gives him versatility. He's played in both a four three defense and a three four defense, but because of his size, he can play no tackle and he can also play the three four defensive end position. He can play both spots because of his size. So the scheme versatility is there because of his size. It's a really good size for a 3-4 defense lineman, and we know the Lions are running a 3-4 this season. Now, I think there's better spots that you can put him in in a 3-4 defense, and we'll get into that. So let's get into some of my initial takeaways from watching him. Let's start off with a good first. The first thing that I love about his game, and it just stands out as soon as you start watching him, the first play I watched, I was like, whoa, it's that get off. Great explosiveness, very quick off the snap, and he just brings a lot of power. It really helps him build up a lot of power very quickly. It catches some off linemen off guard. It puts him in a really good spot. Sometimes his get off is so quick that on like, let's say a zone stretch run, he can beat the offensive lineman simply to the backfield. He is that quick off the snap. And it really goes in with a lot of linemen that we brought in this offseason. When you talk about Levi and Lee McNeil, at their size, how explosive they are, he definitely has that to his game. That explosiveness, it might be the best part of his game so that is huge very similar to other defense that we brought in it fits an attacking defense it fits a one gap style defense to me get off the ball get to the backfield right just explode as fast as you can be disruptive he has that that part of his game is really fun to watch it's pretty consistent but he's got really good explosiveness the second thing is his pad level is regularly really good all right usually he has good leverage good pad level stays low and it helps him a ton he doesn't get up tall see like i said i think he's bucked up a little bit since he's in the nfl but you could tell when he gets up tall things go bad and we'll get into that in a second but he usually keeps pretty good pad level and that's huge because once you have the good pad level then you can do a whole bunch of things off of that pass for sure or as the run defender so explosiveness good pad level those are two extremely important things that he does well and it really shows up as a bull rusher okay when he bull rushes that quick explosiveness getting good pad level getting inside right side the numbers of an offensive line punching him right in their chest and then he can drive back so the bull rush is something that's really good now i do think he's lacking pass rush moves i really didn't see much but when he does bull rush it can be effective because of that and he is relentless okay you could tell this guy was trying to make a roster spot it was simple as that he was trying to find playing time he was trying to find a home and he was going at it every single snap down to down he was going crazy all right didn't matter what it looked like he was going to try to get to the quarterback he was going to try to get involved in the tackle try to put something on his stack there. The guy is extremely relentless and he was very rotational with Cleveland. Very rotational. One drive, a couple drives he'd be off and the next drive he'd get on the field. So when he had opportunities, he was just going at it. He was trying to play extremely aggressive and just make something happen. That, that was his goal is just try to make something happen. Try to make a big play to kind of get like a, you know, just, just something that makes a name for yourself. But then let's talk about some of the issues. Max Bend as a pass rusher. And this doesn't usually show up a ton against some of the interior offensive linemen because they're not that quick either. But he definitely lacks in Bend to get around and finish off a pass rushing play. So he can make that first move and someone get in position, get a little bit of a step. But he doesn't really bend around the corner that that well, which kind of makes him better in the inside. You know, a lot of that has to do with his size. He's got explosiveness, but he doesn't have that bend to get around the edge. He does have an issue as a run defender as well as he has a tendency to get sideways. Okay, now this is what I'm talking about. Good pad level. He does have routinely good pad level. When it goes bad, it goes bad. He gets stood straight up. He almost plays a little bit smaller than his size. He plays more explosive than his size, but he also doesn't play to his size. You know, he's able to be pushed off his spot too easily. To me, he does not fit that well in a two-gapping defense because he can't really hold his ground. Just from what I saw personally, I don't know what he looks like now. It's a couple years ago, but he seemed to struggle holding his ground, especially in a two-gap defense, especially if he was lined up at nose tackle. That's where he really struggled. A center and a guard hitting him, he was going to get completely shot that play. He could get turned around. Now, he's relentless, so he'll fight back into it. He does a really good job of kind of getting his arm in the way and walling off and fighting back into the play. He has a pretty good understanding of where the play is going as well. So he always knows where the ball carrier is, which allows him to get back in place, but holding his ground at the line of scrimmage is really tough for him to do from the inside spot now if you're going to play a two gap defense to me his best fit then comes as a three four defensive end just because i think that's where he'd be the best at going against tackles going against guards rather than the interior of an offensive line going at some of those smaller guys playing the defensive end position however i think his honestly his best fit is probably a three four defense fan that plays some of those three technique roles going against guards so playing more tight formations in a three four defense less five techniques against tackles i didn't really see him 
him do that a lot. Maybe he could do it. I just think with some of his bend, it's probably not the best fit for him. But I do like him trying to get after the quarterback. I really like him one-gapping, attacking downhill, and going against guards. You know, that's where I really like him at that spot. That's my favorite part. Or, you know, kind of getting in between the guard and the center. Initial takeaway. So I think that's what his role will be. To me, it looks like he'd be a rotational player, of course. He'd be an early down player that would be like a 3-4 defensive end in tight formations. I think that would fit him the best. Uh, one-gapping as well would be really, really good for him that he's attacking using just that explosiveness. Not trying to read and react and hold his ground. Instead, just going at it. Using his strength, which is just explosiveness, to get to the backfield. If he's trying to hold his own, that's not the best spot for him. It's really not. And if you're going to do that, you got to put him on the defensive end. I don't think you can put him at nose tackle to try to hold the ground game, right? To try to hold the run. I just don't think he's that good at it. Passing downs, then, then you could probably slide him inside a little bit more. If you know it's an obvious passing down, you could probably slide him into nose tackle, things like that. Kind of like what I think Lee McNeil will do, but also Levi on Wuzurike may get opportunities there, like, like Aaron Glenn said, to slide inside on obvious passing downs. That's where he could be used at the nose tackle position, but he is scheme for still. He's played both in a 4-3 and a 3-4, and four, but he is an attacking defensive lineman that has great get-off, great explosiveness in his game. You can just see it, and he's hungry. He's relentless. He goes after it. I mean, there's a lot of things that could be added. I didn't see a lot of pass rush moves to his arsenal. It seemed just kind of like bull rush, and every once in a while, he'd try to hit him with a... Uh, he tried to rip through, but that was pretty much it. I mean, it really wasn't a lot there. He doesn't have the pass rushing bed, but he definitely has the explosiveness. And he can move guys off their feet because he gets good pad level, gets good positioning, and then he just he just gets after. I believe because of his get off, he's going to have a lot of stunt pass rushing potential. So you can mix up some things, rushing from the inside, outside, outside, inside, setting up stunts because of his size, but also that get off. He's going to have some competition, though, for the Lions if he's going to try to make a spot on this team because we do have some good comp here. You know, you're going to have John Penasini. You're going to have the Kevin Strongs. John Atkins, you're going to have, who else? Ali McNeil's, right, the young guys. There's a lot of defensive line. That's Jason, Jason Cornell, Deshaun Hand. I mean, they're not all exactly the same. Like, he's a little bit bigger than a guy like Jason Cornell. He's like 20 pounds on, on Jason. Defensive line that can move around and shift to a lot of different things. Size gives him a scheme fit for the Detroit Lions here. I just didn't think he looked big enough to hold a two gap in the inside. However, maybe he proves me wrong. Maybe he does, and he does that role, and he can hold it down. Hey, you know, I don't know what he looks like. This is back in 2018, but I did like his fit. 3-4 defensive end, can play nose tackle, but I think he's best fit for a one-gapping attacking style defense. So Brian Price is a Detroit Lion. The Lions add some depth here. And I'm telling you, I mean, I know he hasn't played a lot. However, if you do want to go watch this film, check it out, but don't necessarily get caught up in did he get a sack. Watch his get off. He's very explosive and he's quick. And uh, it is pretty exciting to see from down to down. And he seems to have a really good personality as well. He just wants to find a home. So this is an opportunity, only 26 years old, to try to find a home, to try to find a long-term option for him. So Brian Price, the Detroit Lion, go out there and kill it, man. Thank you, Brian, for watching. I'll see you guys later, and I'm out.